Hello learners, this is CC Engineering. Today we're going to talk about another fun topic in physics. It is all about Maxwell's equations. The person behind the Maxwell's equation is James Clerk Maxwell. He's a Scottish scientist who was fun with geometry and mechanical models. He started with the ideas in the mathematics that other physicists had already established, but he put them together to create a new, complete understanding of electromagnetism. We mentioned the term electromagnetism, but what is electromagnetism? So, electromagnetism is the study of the electromagnetic force, one of the four fundamental forces of nature. It is the interaction between electric fields and magnetic fields. An electromagnetic field is a combination of two fields, an electric field and a magnetic field. Now, have you heard the three equations of Maxwell? Now, let's talk about about it one by one. Now, the Maxwell first equation is just a form of Gauss law. Maxwell's first equation states that the electric flux through a closed surface is proportional to the total charge enclosed by that surface. A closed surface, in this case, is just a surface of any shape that completely encloses a charge, like a sphere or any other three-dimensional shape. Mathematically, this equation says that Electric flux is the integral of the electric field over the area of the surface, which is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the permittivity of free space. The permittivity of free space is a constant proportionality that we've used before that relates electric charge to the physical effect of electric fields. In simple terms, it is a physical constant which represents the capability of a vacuum to permit electric fields. If the electric field is constant over the surface, then the left side of the equation becomes E times A. Now let's proceed to the second equation. Maxwell's second equation is also a form of Gauss law, only with magnetic flux instead of electric flux. As we have discussed before, magnetic sources are always dipoles, which means it has a north and south pole and the magnetic field lines leave from the north pole and return back to the south. When you're looking at how a magnetic field interacts with the surrounding surface, you see that the field lines that leave the surface out of the north pole must enter back through the surface to reach the south pole. This results in the overall magnetic flux being zero. Now let's move on to the third equation. Maxwell's third equation doesn't have anything to do with Gauss law. Instead, it's Faraday's law, but just slightly different. As you can recall, Faraday's law of induction says that a changing magnetic field will induce the electromotive force in a loop of wire. Maxwell's version is a more general, simplifying Faraday's law to show the value of that induced EMF. It says that EMF is equal to the line integral of the electric field over a closed loop. So with this equation, you can see the connection between a changing magnetic flux and an induced electric field. Maxwell's first and second equations were so similar, one for electric fields and one for magnetic fields, which he knew there must be an equation that complemented Faraday's law as well. If a changing magnetic flux produces an electric field, why is there not a complementary law seeing the reverse? Why can a changing electric flux result in an induced magnetic field? Now, that will be answered in his fourth equation. Here, in Maxwell's fourth equation, he started with Ampere's law, which states that current trail wire induces a magnetic field around a path surrounding the wire. Maxwell added what is known as the displacement current into Ampere's law to complete the equation. Mathematically, the displacement current is equal to the change in the capacitor's charge over time, and that is equal to the change in electric flux over time multiplied by the permittivity of free space constant. With the addition he made to Ampere's law, Maxwell's equations were complete, and using his laws today, we can see a pattern in the production of electric and magnetic fields. Did you know your washing machine is a product of electromagnetism? Yes, that is right. It uses electromagnetic induction that is included in electric motors used in a washing machine. Magnetic recording and data storage equipment such as tape recorders, VCRs, hard disks are product of electromagnetism. Aside from that, we also have motors and generators, electric bills and buzzers, 
loudspeakers, headphones, and many more. And that ends our lesson for today. So, did you enjoy our topic for today? I hope you certainly did. See you again next time for more interesting and fun topics only here in AC Engineering. We make engineering topics easy and fun for you.